Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Heart Church. Please stand. Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Heart Church once again. I'm Father Carlos Alvarez, your pastor. We're blessed to have Father Matthew Wharton with us these days. Uh, as you heard from him last week, he'd like to meet with you individually as a couple, as a family. Please call the office and leave your name and a phone number. He'll contact you, have an appointment with you. Three simple steps for a fuller Catholic life. Half an hour, 30 minutes. So please call Father Matthew. He's helping in Capulín this morning. He helped in St. Joseph last week in Monte Vista. Last week I was at St. Joseph in Monte Vista and St. Francis Jerome in Center. I miss seeing you all. It's good to see you all and to be with you. Today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time and we offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for the following intentions. Jesse Jaramillo and Elmer Archuleta for their eternal happiness. This is also Respect Life Month. Not just Respect Life Sunday, but Respect Life Month. So we'll hear about God who is love, and God, who's the author and the giver of life today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers, my sisters, as we gather this morning, we prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries with humble and contrite hearts. We acknowledge our sins, trusting in God's infinite mercy. Raise the dead to life in the Spirit, Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we continue to give God glory together as we say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King O God Almighty Father Lord Jesus Christ only begotten Son Lord God Lamb of God Son of the Father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You were seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray.
Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a, wo into a woman with the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall we call woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. In the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. The second reading from Hebrews, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. of the Lord.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall join a wife. And the two will become one flesh. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another, commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. It was the eve of Divine Mercy Sunday, 2008, that early that afternoon, maybe right about noon, we celebrated a 60th anniversary Mass for Ben and Gertrude Gregos. They were the couple that had been married the longest. One of them was related to Monsignor Leo Gomez, of the Diocese of Gallup, he celebrated the Mass, I can celebrate Mass with him. 
then we moved over into the hall for luncheon and other activities. And in that time, we got the news that John Paul II, who was the reigning pope, had died. He'd been sick for months, but he died on that eve of Divine Mercy 2008. So I directed someone to go to the church and ring the death toll for John Paul II. I believe it's one toll every six seconds, one for each year of their life. So, um, there was a couple, uh, Walt and June Geisen, that got married the same year, just a couple months later. I think they got married in May or June, whereas um, the, uh, the Gallegos were married in April. And uh, just wonderful couples. And, and I think about them, you know, um, Gertrude, I believe she fell, hurt her hip, and she took seriously ill and she died. And 10 days later, uh, Ben died. I think of a broken heart. Uh, Walt was, and that was in 2013, I had left the parish and been assigned to another parish. And then a couple years later, Walt um, took sick and passed away. Uh, but June, June is alive and well, uh, as, as of my last reports. Uh, June's very uh, active. She learned to ski in her 70s, you know. <laughs> I worry about falling in the bathtub, but she learned how to ski at 70 and still skis. Anyway, um, I think about those couples and 65 years plus of marriage uh, for those two couples. And, and really, it's representing in the flesh what we hear about in sacred scripture this morning. In sacred scripture, we are told that Jesus affirms God's original plan for humanity. Moses permitted divorce, but God's original plan is for one man, one woman to be together for life, and the two become one, a one flesh union. This is God's plan for love and God's plan for life. In the first letter of John, we hear that God is love, so we know that God is love. And God was complete in himself, yet the Father, Son, and Spirit chose to create the world and to create the crown of creation, human person, one man for one woman. And we were reminded of that one story of creation in our first reading this morning. And so man was alone in a sense, existential loneliness. But with the gift of woman, that suitable partner came. And so men and women are equal in dignity. We're made in the image and likeness of God. We are good. And what is God? God is a communion of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are called to be a communion of persons. And for most of the Catholic world, most of the world, that is in holy matrimony. This is God's plan. Jesus elevated the institution of marriage to a sacrament. So the teaching was hard for people to accept then as now. But God elevates uh, marriage, Jesus elevates marriage to a sacrament that is an outward sign of a deeper interior reality. What's that deep interior reality? The love of God. The love of God for each of us. The love of God who helps us live a life of grace now for the promise of eternal glory. For most, it's marriage. For some, it's priesthood or the religious life. At times, people are called to be celibate for the kingdom of God, to remain unmarried, and that's okay. And understand that some of us may be separated, some of us may be divorced, some of us may be widowed, but this is still God's plan. And it takes two to have this, com this co covenant with God, this covenant of love, with God in order to live out God's plan. And so from love comes the gift of life. Love and life follow, which is what we hear in 
sacred scripture. The book of Genesis, it wasn't included in this morning's reading, but at the end of this creation story, God says, be fruitful and multiply. So traditionally, Jews and the church, the new Israel, believes that children are a great blessing. This is one of the precepts of marriage, is that we be open to life. Because God is love. God is life. Only God can create life, and only God can take life. Which is why in this respect month, life of October, in this month of the Most Holy Rosary, we pray for life, that the gift of life be respected. We understand that the highest court in our land made the worst decision in its history, uh, January 23rd, 1973. And so to affirm our love of life and our prayer for life next Saturday at 11 o'clock at the corner of Main Street and Edison, just a block from this church, in front of the San Luis Valley um, Federal Bank, we'll be praying a rosary for life. So please join us from 11 to 12 next Saturday morning. So we continue to pray for life, and we continue to pray that uh, laws will protect life, and with the grace of God, the Roe v. Wade will be overturned. But, but, but we continue to treasure life. That's the most important thing that we do is we open ourselves to, to the love of God and God's love for us, and then we try to live that love in holy matrimony, in the blessing of children, in family life, so that our lives reflect what we heard in Genesis, what, what Jesus himself affirmed, that a man will leave his father and mother and join his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And what God has separated, no man will separate. Because we know there are forces of evil, forces of sin against marriage and against family life. We heard that in Fatima, that the enemy would attack families to try to draw us away from God. So, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful gift, life. It's a beautiful gift, love. And it's something that we want to treasure and that we want to promote and increase. Whatever our vocation, whatever our state in life, we remember that God is love and that God wills that we treasure the gift of life. Um, so that, that, that's, that's really what, what it's all about. And we understand that um, sometimes uh, as faithful Catholics, we're joined by people who may not be practicing the faith uh, according to the third commandment every Sunday, really. And so, you know, there's, there's a tendency for us to say, well, well, who are you? Why are you here today? What's going on? And, and really the, the, the point is we should love them. We should experience the love of Jesus Christ in this Sunday encounter with Jesus Christ. And we should be welcoming and loving and compassionate and accepting and open to maybe folks that are here for the first time, folks that haven't been here for a while. doesn't matter. They're God's children. God loves them. God gave them life, just as he loves us and gives us life. And that's how we should welcome them and embrace them. That's the invitation for us today in this gospel that reminds us of the foundation of God's gift to us, his love, his life. And so let us pray that we'll see a return to holy matrimony, that we will have mercy and compassion for those who may not be married for whatever reason, without judgment, without condemnation. Just continue to love them too, because they are brothers and sisters too. We pray for our young people to discern their call to holiness. For most of them, it will be holy matrimony, but maybe some young men will be called to priesthood. Maybe some young women will be called to religious life to support those vocations as well. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then of done again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude for the gift of life, the gift of love that comes from God, our Heavenly Father, in union with the Son and the Spirit, we turn to God, our Heavenly Father, with our prayers. For those who shepherd the faithful, that they always seek God's will, let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders and legislators, that their policies support and strengthen families, let us pray to the Lord. Let catechists continue to deepen their love of the Word of God, and let those seeking membership in the church hear the Word with open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who gather at this table of love see one another's eyes, the love of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all here present, that their faith and simplicity bring them a deeper understanding of God's reign. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions we celebrate at this Mass, George and Rose Carroll, Lauren and Susan Allen, Jesse Jeremy Allen, Elma Archuleta, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. May God graciously hear us through the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. We also offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass this morning for Adam James Griego, who was buried from our church this Thursday. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you are love, and you gift us with your love and life, so that our life may reflect your love for all people. Help us sustain the gifts of holy matrimony and family life. May we imitate Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the holy family. Grant this through your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you ple are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in your Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Jesse Jaramillo, Elmer Archuleta, and Adam James Griego, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, the child Jesus, patroness of our diocese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. First John says, God is love. And we know the God who created life is life. On the sacred altar, on this Eucharistic table, Jesus offers us his body, blood, soul, and divinity so that we may treasure this gift of love, this gift of life in the context of our family, however that looks now. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you, Rita. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him.
let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ask you to be seated for a few moments. We have a few announcements. Tomorrow is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. If you're free and would like to join the community of Plaza de los Valdeses, uh, Seven Mile Plaza, there's a beautiful little mission church dedicated to St. Francis of Assisi. We'll have Mass at 11 o'clock. There'll be a potluck following, and then there'll be a blessing of animals. No sacrifice of animals, okay? Not happening, okay? If you can't join us then, here in our courtyard, just to your left, my right, at, at 5.30 we'll do the blessing of the animals here. Um, again, just a reminder about next Saturday's uh, prayer, Rosary for Life, 11 o'clock, just a block from here, the corner of 4th, I mean Main Street, Main Street and Edison, near the San Luis Valley uh, Federal Bank uh, employee parking area, okay? Right there on the sidewalk. Um, we began the Youth Mass last uh, Saturday. We were off to a wonderful start. I want to thank Katie, all her choir members, Tita, for playing. Uh, we invite you to join us for Mass. People go, well, Father, I've already come to Mass. What are you talking about? Well, Holy Mother Church requires that we attend one Mass every Sunday. Requires one. Holy Mother Church recommends that everyone go to two Masses every Sunday. Everyone. Not just priests, not just deacons, not just people who work for the church, musicians, everyone. So if you'd like to come back and join us at 5 o'clock, you may. For parents, grandparents, godparents, the confirmation classes begin this afternoon. Last week we just had an organizational meeting after that 5 o'clock youth mass. Uh, the classes begin today. It's 3.45 to 4.45. And I know there's bronco fever back in the Mile High region again. <laughs> so you're like, Father? Don't step on my Broncos. I'm not. <laughs> Jesus is more important than the Denver Broncos. And I know I'm a Bronco fan. <laughs> I learned my lesson. I'll tell you a story about that sometime if you ask. Anyway, um, so uh, any sixth grader, seventh grader, eighth grader can begin the process. Any high schooler can begin the process. Sister Kieran Nadualgo, I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. God forgive me if I'm butchering it but she will be teaching our high school candidates. And Elena Byringer will be teaching our middle school candidates. So it's not too late to, to begin. In fact, today is the perfect day to start. So we look forward to seeing them in class. We look forward to them to having here for mass. And if you'd like to come back and join us for a second mass, you're welcome to. That'll be my fifth mass, okay? So don't worry, you know. Uh, Jesus loves you and uh, he just wants to pour his love to you in Holy Communion. So you're welcome to come back and join us. You're most welcome to do that. Um, we love children. We love life. I said that during the homily. It's true. So when you're out doing your shopping, if you grab a bag of candy for your door or for yourself, hoping that nobody comes to your door, however that might be, uh, you can get an extra bag for the children of Sacred Heart. On Friday, October 29th, we'll have our fall festival. Am I asking for donations of candy? So if you grew up in the 80s and you saw that tagline in a movie, that's where every time I hear the word, that's what I think and that's what I say. So, so bring a bag by the office and, and we'll have a wonderful fall festival. And then the following night, the Spanish club at Alamosa will host the Dia de los Muertos on October 30th. So we'll have more details about that coming up, okay? So there's a lot of announcements. So I appreciate your patience. Also, there's, there's adult faith formation. It's not just for children and, and, ch and young people in s middle school or high school. It's for all of us. So from 9.15 to 10.15 every Sunday, please join us for adult faith formation. 
there was many, a lot of coffee, and I saw uneaten donuts. I never see that. I mean, I'm a, ca I'm a Catholic priest. I see donut boxes empty. I saw donut boxes half full this morning. Those, those donuts, that coffee are waiting for you. Our catechists and the other people learning are waiting for you. So please, please join us, 9.15, 10.15, every Sunday morning after the 8 o'clock Mass, before our 10.30 Mass. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.